yellow cake that Cypher was having the PF's transport. Before we met you, the boss recovered it from a truck crossing the savannah. Are there metallic archaea inside it? Yes, the archaea metabolize uranium-235 to subsist. They must be stored inside yellow cake, or they cannot survive. So those biological traces we took for impurities were actually the real cargo. Of course they are deactivated, so they do not trigger a sudden enrichment. They are like baker's yeast. Yet, they do gradually enrich the uranium as they feed. I imagine you detected weapons-grade traces. Yeah, we did. And the malachite that was loaded on the truck had traces of uranium in it, too. <laughs> so that's the flower, huh? Skullface was gonna sell do-it-yourself new kits. The uranium-enriching Archaea complete with the user's manual. And the ores with the uranium could be sourced by the client or provided by Cypher. Even the trace amounts buried in common ores can be enriched to weapons-grade uranium by the metallic Archaea. Proving that must have been the most important factor of the trials. That and the ability to successfully prevent detonation. So if the amounts of uranium in the ores are low enough, they can get past any inspection. And you only need a tiny amount of the Archaea to act as the yeast. No great challenge to smuggle that either. The first step towards saturating the world with nukes. His plan. That was not my intention. Hmm. My only goal in developing the metallic Archaea was to save the Diné. What made you think a tool for creating undetectable nuclear weapons would save your people? After 70 years, the Diné reclaimed the Navajo Nation from which we were banished. We bore all the hardships of poverty. But we were proud to live off the land we called our own. But in the moment the atomic bomb was dropped on Hiroshima, everything changed. I don't get it. The nuclear arms race between the US and the Soviet Union began with the end of the Second World War. Suddenly, there was a massive demand for uranium. And it was our ill fortune that the ground beneath the Navajo Nation was rich with uranium ore. The Black Anna government set up mine after mine, and many of the Diné worked them. Never informed of any danger. Every day, they went to work with no protection. The slag was simply piled out in the open. When rain fell, uranium traces left behind would seep out, and when the ground dried, it was blown about as dust. Land and water were contaminated, irradiated. Many of us became sick and died. That pain lives on to this day. I have no idea. Wanting more than anything to revive the land my forebears left to me, I was delighted upon discovering microbes that eat uranium. If they could be domesticated, I believed we could rid our land of uranium. Were you successful? No. The research called for funding on a colossal scale. But nobody was willing to invest with no prospect of a return. And that's when Skullface showed up. Correct. I can save you and your people. We share the same will. That is what he said to me. And I believed him. Black Anna forced me to abandon my uranium cleanup work and focus on nuclear weapons. And he held all the Diné hostage. Today, the uranium mines within the reservation are finally closing down. It is simply less expensive now to source uranium overseas. New victims, different places. But uranium is a tactical resource. 
to rely on a foreign country for it is a difficult decision to make. And he was in the perfect place to influence that decision. He could have condemned your people to the mines forever. The contamination comes not only from uranium. The fallout from the Nevada nuclear tests also settled on our lands. As if our fortune were not already bad enough. We are also downwinders. To save the Diné, I must complete my original research. Code Talker, I haven't seen you eat a single thing since you got here. Let me guess. Photosynthesis? Oh? What makes you say that? Well, a long time ago, I knew someone with a similar ability. Well, you are correct. Most of my body is covered with parasites. I supply them with water, and in return, I receive sugars they produce when exposed to light. Uh-huh. It isn't just my skin either. The parasites also act as my eyes. They have replaced many of my internal organs as well. It is thanks to them that I live on after over a century. How did you obtain them anyway? Through your research? I would like to say as much, but there is more to it than that. Let me take you back 20 years. I had hit a dead end with my parasite research. Then I was approached by a foundation. They said they had a sample of an unusual strain of parasite. Which Planet foundation? Apparently they had links to ARPA. But that is all I learned. I was somewhat ignorant of the ways of the world. Just being able to study it was enough for me. Yeah, I've heard that before. Go on. Half in doubt, I visited them to discover the body of an old man. Well, to be precise, his partial remains. A collection of parts, you could say. The man had died in an explosion. An old man, you say? His flesh had not decomposed. In fact, the tissue's cells were still metabolizing. The parasite had infected or should I say assimilated with the tissues and was keeping them alive. I became obsessed with studying the body parts, foregoing food and even sleep. Every day was filled with new discoveries. The parasite's biology, internal anatomy, life cycle. But there was only so much I could learn through observation. And so I made a decision. To truly know the parasites, I had to live with them. So, you implanted them inside you from the dead man's flesh? Correct. <sighs> it was quite a gamble, whether or not they would adapt to me. But fortunately, it appears I was compatible with them. Or perhaps, through my many years of research, my immune system learn to tolerate them. Were they that body's only parasite? Yes. However, there was a separate specimen that supplied its host with adrenaline in response to pain, and yet another that could control insects at will through secreting heterogeneous pheromones. I wanted exposure to them, to take them into me. But my wishes were denied. Their records, though, provided clues that helped advance my research. Would you care to join me? A life spent never worrying about food is a most wonderful one. I think I'll pass. But thanks. This has been helpful. The one that covers the parasite that lives on the surface of the skull's bodies is what gives them their power, similar to my children who live in my skin. 
I modified the parasites I isolated from the body of that old man, differentiating them with various abilities. One that can blend perfectly into its surroundings by exposing the pigments in its cells at will. Another that by harboring multiple species of metallic archaea can oxidize and reduce metal. Isolating the one that covers and transplanting it into an artificial medium should provide the same abilities as the skulls, but they can only subsist within a human body. Once transplanted into the medium, they will eventually die. Another thing, the weakness of the one that covers is desiccation. Their surface moisture loss is greater than ours. The reason they give off mist is to alleviate this by releasing the salts inside them as microparticles. Water vapor condenses around them, appearing as mist. But this dries out the atmosphere until they cannot even produce mist. And once their supply of water from the host runs out, the parasites are in danger. They, along with their host, enter a form of suspended animation. However, a similar effect occurs if they come into contact with a large amount of water. Rain, for instance. The one that covers will temporarily abandon other processes in his eagerness to absorb the water. Make the weather your ally. Hewitt's dug up some interesting facts about our skull-faced friend. Nine years ago, he was exiled to South Africa, stripped of political power. The upshots that he ceased being a serious threat, in Cypher's eyes anyway. They eased up on surveillance, giving him an opening to establish his own military unit. One that answered to his will alone. Those men likely had no idea their orders were coming from Skullface. They probably didn't even know the organization was a part of Cypher at all. Anyway, it was in South Africa where he found renewed interest in parasites. And when he discovered the vocal cord parasites, he began to make his plan. Wipe the English language out of existence. Free the world, not by taking men's lives, but by taking their tongues. In his eyes, the greatest symbiotic parasite the world's ever known isn't microbial. It's linguistic. Words are what keep civilization, our world, alive. There was something Skullface said. America is made up of many peoples, but those peoples never mix. Quite so. One nation, home to hundreds of different ethnic groups, many of whom stick to their respective living areas. Little colonies, not interacting with other groups. Going out of their way to avoid one another. Their land, organizations, relationships. Thus, the United States of America is no melting pot. It is more of a salad bowl. It is not made up from one people. But for its minorities to function in society, a common ground is needed. Language. Even if the country is not one, no, because it's not one, a lingua franca is necessary. English. American hegemonism was born from the illusion that English could unite diverse ethnicities. In taking in people from around the globe, America became a microcosm of it. Now the boundaries between it and the rest of the world have become blurred. However different our neighbors may be, English enables us to create symbiotic relationships with each other. If English can bring unacquainted neighbors together in America, this should hold true for the world. This salad bowl that is the world can also become one.
Please select a mission. Mission accepted. is to eliminate as many enemy combat vehicles as you can. For this mission, we're back up for the guerrillas' offensive. That means our mission isn't over until theirs is. Keep an eye on the remaining time. Also bear in mind that you'll fail the mission if you don't take out a single vehicle. As for payment, the more vehicles, the bigger our paycheck. So give them a real firework show. Check the target's locations on your map. Once you've spotted incoming reinforcements, their location will be added to your iDroid too. The map has been updated. Strike requested. Be careful down there, boss. Clouds approaching. Strike will commence shortly. Target eliminated. Great. Now on to the next. Boss, we have information on new targets. Check your iDroid for their predicted route. The map has been updated. Supplies requested. Supply drop complete.
Supplies requested. Supply drop complete. Requested. Supply drop complete. Supplies requested. Supply drop complete.
incredible. You're taking them out faster than they can come in. The guerrilla's operation is going smoothly, too. Keep it up. Supplies requested. Supply drop complete. Detected. Boss, we have new targets. Check your eye droid for the details. The map has been updated. offensive will be ending soon. Boss, there's still time left. Take out as many vehicles as you can. Strike requested. Development complete. Shortly. Please select a strike point. Strike requested. Strike will commence shortly.
Supplies requested. Supply drop complete. Enemy presence detected. Only two minutes remaining. Updated. Come in. Boss? Awesome.